Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed, your friendly neighborhood doctor. And today we're gonna to be checking out the manga Parallel World Pharmacy. I was kindly sent this to read by the publisher One Piece Books. I thought it was absolutely brilliant and they've agreed to sponsor this video. So we're gonna talk about the medical science of volume one. For those of you who don't know, this is the story of a world-renowned pharmacist and medical researcher who is transported into the body of pharma, a pharmacist in a parallel world where society is basically like in the Middle Ages. So they still use things like exorcism and astrology to try and cure diseases. However, they do have one advantage over us. In this world, they have magic in the form of divine arts. And I hear I must use what he knows from Earth, combined with the divine arts to cure diseases. It's it sounds pretty bad, but it's pretty awesome too. And kind of ask the question, if you were a doctor and transported back in time, would you be able to use what you know to help people? Plus it's just a great fantasy story and some cool characters. So let's learn a little bit more about the medicine behind it. The critical event that causes Farmer to be possessed from our dimension is that he was hit by lightning and he wakes up with these branching vein-like patterns on his skin. And his maid Lottie declares it as he's been blessed with the holy mark of the medicine god Panactheus, which actually turns out to be true in the manga, but these marks are actually what you get in real life when you're struck by lightning, as Farmer correctly diagnoses it as a Lichtenberg figure. The pattern is the root of electrical discharge over the skin, and that's why it resembles a lightning bolt, because that's also demonstrating a type of Lichtenberg figure. Strangely enough, these are not burns. They actually fade within hours. And if you see these as a doctor, it's actually pretty useful because it can only be one thing, a lightning strike. And so we'll give you a quick diagnosis as sometimes patients that are hit by lightning are unable to recall the event or even unconscious. And we find out that Farmer would have been very much unconscious because his heart stopped at the time. So he went into a cardiac arrest, which can happen if you're hit by lightning. If the current goes through the heart, it's gonna depolarize all the heart muscle cells. So they're gonna all contract at once. Your heart may naturally go back into a normal rhythm or it may go into an abnormal cardiac arrest rhythm like VF, so one where effectively no blood is being pumped out of the heart and without a CPR or a defib, you aren't gonna be waking up. We find out that Farmer's cardiac arrest was actually cured with a drug. Difficult to know for sure what was going on without seeing an ECG or knowing the drug, but we often end up giving adrenaline in cardiac arrest every three to five minutes if there is no response. But my best guess, however, is that he may have gone into VF or VT, which ordinarily you'd shock with a defib, but in this realm, they haven't quite figured that out yet, so they may be treating him successfully with something like amiodarone, which is our second line drug if uh, defib isn't doing the trick. Also, let's not forget pharma essentially has symptoms of personality change, memory loss. Clearly we know it's because he's jumped into a parallel world, but lightning strikes can absolutely cause strange neurological symptoms in like 75% of cases, things like amnesia, headaches, and stroke-like symptoms. So speech problems, limb weakness, and reduced sensation. But luckily, most of these fade after a few hours. Although this goes some way to explain farmer's symptoms, it's certainly not going to give you access to the entire memory of a medical researcher from a parallel world. So it's <laughs> definitely more going on than just a standard lightning strike. Pharma gains the most insanely useful tool as a doctor. Like one of the hardest things to do is to diagnose and he gets the ability of divine eye, which basically means he can see where illnesses are affecting. So he'd look at a patient or even someone that isn't a patient and an area of their body would light up indicating where the illness is, kind of like the medical tricorder in Star Trek. The most obvious link with reality is the imaging we use. So ultrasound is probably the closest to this because we can do it at the bedside and useful in assessing abdominal pain, chest pain, shortness of breath, and is being used more and more. The divine eye goes one step further though. It could actually tell you if the diagnosis is correct. So if Farmer names the diagnosis correctly, it goes from light blue to white, which I would totally abuse this <laughs> using brute force. Hmm, looks like someone's got a problem with the leg. DVT, cellulitis, thrombophlebitis, ruptured Baker's cyst, intermittent claudication. Ah, 
Looks like I've got the diagnosis. But actually the idea of this isn't too wild with the development in artificial intelligence. The idea of a divine eye type device that suggests a diagnosis isn't so crazy. We're starting to see AI helping to interpret ECGs and scans. Although let's not write us off as humans just yet, as when Farmer first discovers his powers, he diagnoses reflux esophagitis, a sty, chronic simple rhinitis, tooth decay, and osteoarthritis. And I was thinking, that's pretty darn cool, but wait, I think we need to give us doctors and other medical professionals some credit too, because all these things we could diagnose clinically, by that I mean just talking to the patient and examining them. We don't necessarily need to do any further investigations, which is arguably as impressive as having a divine eye. As well as being able to diagnose on site, Pharma has another magical ability that's even more crazy, and that's the ability to create any chemical he can imagine. Which is where my usefulness as a doctor in this situation would absolutely fail, because we aren't even taught the chemical formulas for most of the drugs we use. So it's luckily that he's actually a medical researcher and not a doctor. And this leads to a cool sequence where he guides us through the production of a topical heparinoid lotion. And this was actually quite interesting for me, how these medications are made. He uses glycerol monastere as an emulsifier, so to help all the different ingredients stay together. He creates the active ingredient that is heparin. And as we said, thank goodness he was a previous genius professor because to remember his chemical formula, I'll flash it up here. It's a mammoth chemical, try and remember that. So that's heparin and anticoagulant, which means it stops your blood from clotting. And we use this a lot in medicine, particularly for the treatment and prevention of DVTs and PE. So blood clots in the legs and in the lungs. It's good learning that a drug also needs to have a delivery mechanism. So in this instance, it's a topical lotion. So we see here is using squalane and cetanol and also petroleum jelly. All of these are oily, waxy ingredients that would make up the lotion that will moisturize and also be absorbed into the skin and therefore help to deliver the active ingredient, the heparin. Heparinoid lotion as a drug isn't used an awful lot, but it is indicated for bruising and superficial thrombophlebitis, so inflammation and clots of the veins on the surface of the body. So with both of these conditions, you want the clots to be broken down, hence he heparin as the active ingredient. And in this case, Pharma gives it to the maid Lottie. She probably has some bruising from all the manual work she does. Lottie gets sick with chicken pox and has exactly the symptoms you'd expect. So is generally unwell, has a fever, and those classic itchy red spots all over the body that turn to blistering lesions. And as stated in the manga, is caused by the varicella zoster virus. And we actually see a picture of the virus here and comparing it to an electron micrograph, it's bang on. So on the outside, we'd have the envelope and in the middle would be the capsid that contains the DNA. A virus is not a living thing, so it doesn't have any organelles there. Nice little touch, they also mentioned shingles. So if you've ever had chicken pox, you might not fully clear the virus from the body so it can lay dormant in your nerve cells. And exactly as they say here, if you're immunocompromised or sometimes for no real reason, the virus can reactivate and therefore you can get a localized outbreak of the virus on one side of the body in just the area of the skin supplied by that nerve. This is shingles and it's pretty common and very painful. They hinted it in the manga, but children with chicken pox don't usually require any specific treatment other than just managing the symptoms. Pharma does decide to treat this by conjuring up acyclovir. Having done heparin earlier, acyclovir would basically be a walk in the park. It's simply 2-amino-9-7 hydroxy ethoxy methyl 1-9 dihydro 6-H purine 6 zone. So easy. I mean, I can barely read it, let alone be able to draw the chemical diagram and imagine it, bring it into life. I mean, if I could just imagine the word acyclovir, uh, I, I could do it that way. Acyclovir is a really important drug for us to have discovered and was done so in the 1970s by three scientists, Elian, Hitchens and Black, and it later won them the Nobel Prize for Medicine. 
as we said before, viruses aren't alive. So how can you kill something that isn't alive? That's the real genius of the drug as it essentially works by inhibiting the viral DNA from replicating in your cells. Although its use in chickenpox is limited because chickenpox is generally a self-limiting illness anyway. And to get the full benefit of acyclovir, it needs to be started within 24 hours of onset of symptoms. Absolutely, as Farmer mentions in the manga, He's right again on that one. And in the finale of Volume 1, the Emperor, Her Majesty Elizabeth II, has a mysterious illness. Her symptoms of malaise, fever and hemoptysis, so coughing up blood. Already, we could have a pretty good guess at what might be going on. I mean, if this was in a medical school exam, I know what answer I would go with. So let's find out a little bit more. Farmer again uses his diagnostic eye and we find out it's affecting both lungs. With a symptom like hemoptysis, it's only ever gonna really come from the lungs, but it's useful to know both lungs are affected because this changes our differential diagnosis. And Farmer comes up with a few differentials and he kind of uses that brute force method of figuring out what's going on by suggesting a bunch of them, exactly as I suggested. So metastatic lung cancer definitely can give you hemoptysis and can affect both lungs. So on chest X-ray, it would show multiple cannonball lesions and you'd want to explore other symptoms such as breast lumps or bowel changes to try and figure out where the primary tumor is. It can certainly make you feel generally unwell, but unlikely to make you so acutely unwell with a fever unless accompanying uh, with an infection. So I don't think that's what's going on, but let's not rule it out. Next up, emphysema. So this is a chronic inflammatory condition of the lung where the lung tissue has been eroded away by the immune system, constantly defending itself against an inhaled toxin, most often seen in cigarette smoking. So the chest X-ray would show hyperinflation and loss of lung density. It would affect both lungs, but is gonna be a much longer history. And although predisposes you to infective exacerbations on its own would not cause a fever. There'd also need to be significant exposure to an inhaled toxin in the history. So I think we can rule that one out. Pneumonia, now we're talking an infection of the air sacs of the lungs. So we'd certainly see fever, malaise, cough, usually not with blood, but just the coughing process can sometimes rupture small blood vessels. On chest X-ray, we typically see only one lung affected or usually only one lobe of a lung affected. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule. So we then start thinking about other types of lung infections. And as I thought on first hearing the symptoms, we have a case of pulmonary tuberculosis, an infection of the lung, caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. On chest x-ray, you often see consolidation or even cavities in the upper lobes of the lung and also enlargement of the hilar lymph nodes. Farmer's knowledge, Matt, he still got it because he absolutely nails the treatment here. TB is very difficult to treat, so we use a combination of four antibiotics, exactly as we say here, ethambutol, pyrazinazide, isonazid, and rifampicin. I could barely spell them, let alone knowing all the chemical formulas to be able to imagine them into existence like pharma does. So massive respect for that. And so there you have it, a little bit more on the medical science behind the manga. If there's anything I've missed or any theories that you have, then please drop them in the comments below. I always love hearing your thoughts. And as I said at the top, I had an absolute blast reading this. So thank you to One Piece Books for sponsoring this video and sending me a copy. If you want to get hold of the manga yourself, I'll leave some links down below. Thank you again so much for all the support on the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.